Okay, so up to now we did uh, three chapters. The first one was installing HS7 kit. Then we've seen the sender. And then we went to the receiver and we sent some messages and talked a bit about acknowledgements and the message structure. And uh, now it's time to do some real work. And we're going to get the information from the HL7 message directly to our database. Now for that, of course, we need SQL Server. I have here the Express Edition of SQL Server. Of course, you can use whatever SQL Server version you have. The Express, the Standard, the Enterprise, 2008, 2005. And I'm going to connect to my database. And... Okay, so the first thing would be to download the demo project, uh, which I already did. Here it is. And we have here a database structure that we are going to use. You have here also the README, which goes step by step of what we are going to do today. So, um, this is an SQL script that creates a couple of tables, the messages, the patients. And these are the tables that uh, we'd like to unload the data that comes from the HL7 messages into. I'm going to create here a database called HL7Demo2. Let's run this script. Sorry, let's run this script. Refresh here. So we see another database, HL7 Demo2. And if you go to the table, so we have messages table with a couple of columns. We have message date, message type, message control ID. And we have a patient's table with patient name, patient ID, patient first name, last name, date of birth, sex address, and social security number. The next step is to open the mapper. Instead of opening the mapper directly, I'm going to do just double click here on the mapping test HL7 kit. HL7 kit is our suffix and it's going to open the mapper. Now don't worry, this is okay because it says that the initial catalog in the connection string is not defined. We're going to connect to the database now, so just click OK and let's find our database. And the reason here is that the catalog name is incorrect. I should write here HL7Demo2 and check the connection. Now the connection is valid and if I have trouble with that I can use the UDL wizard and get the connection. But no need for that. And we have the mapper. Then it says that there's no HL7 queue. Um, so we're gonna click and create it. The HL7 queue is used for receiving messages, for sending messages, sorry. And we're going to create it anyhow, anyway, but uh, we're not going to use it in this example. So it gives you the SQL code, just create it. The SQL code, just create it. And now we have one more table that we're going to use later. Okay. So here is our project. Um, that's the starting point. And let me show you around the mapper. The mapper is our main configuration tool for configuring HL7 messages. And it has two sides, inbound and outbound. I can switch to outbound. Outbound is when you're going to send messages. Let's stick now to inbound, so we're going to switch back to inbound messaging. And on the left side, I have my message and we map messages by event. This is the event type and I can map as many messages as I like for an event, for every event. For every event I can map a message. 
So this event is ADTA01, it's patient registration, and on the right side I have my database structure. You see here that after configuring, so we have these two tables. It's very important that between our tables there are relationships using the foreign keys. They are marked with these colors, and you see that the messages is the parent table and the patients is the child table. And you see here that I have already mapped messages, and you can see here at the bottom part of the mapping application my mapping. Let's uh, let's go over the mapping and see what what are we doing here. So the first mapping is of the date time of the message. Here it is, and it says MSH six. MSH is a segment in the message. It's the first segment, and it's number six date time. And it goes directly to message date time, and I can see here it's a date time. We have automatic data type conversion in HL7 kit, so you shouldn't be worried about that. And we have here, the second one is MSH8, you see it's immediately highlighted down here. Let's say, uh, for example, delete it, I mark it, and remove it. Yes, I'm sure. And now you see it's clear, and the way I map it back, or map additional field, is simply by doing this. Just simple drag and drop and put this field. Let's say I would like to have the sequence number or the version ID in the message. Let's see how I do that. I go to the SQL server and I'm going to modify the messages table. Okay, and now I'm going to say here message version ID. I'm going to put it as a string, so it's going to be an nvarchar50. That's enough, and I'll allow uh, nulls into it. And I'm going to click save or execute. Okay. Now the data has changed. And if I go back to the mapper and I click reload, you see I have here the message version ID and one, now I want to map the message version ID I simply drag it here, drop it here and voila. One more interesting thing is the limiters between messages and we didn't go into it before but if you click on a sender on a message You're going to see here that there are encoding characters. That's the hat and the tilde, the wave, and the backslash and the ampersand, and of course the bar. So we use these in order to break fields into subfields. For example, patient name, you see it's Doe, Hat, John, and we'd like to split it into two fields. You can see it here that patient name comes part two, the hat comes from the part two go to the first name and part one goes to the last name. The way I do it, let's delete these two mappings and re-add them. Yes, I'm sure. I'm gonna get the patient name from the PAD segment. It's under the patient here patient name and I'm going to map it to the first name and I'm going to map it again to the second name to the last name and now after I've done that I'll take this and say that the first name comes from two and the last name comes from one okay I'm going to save this okay so I have a mapping and it's time to test it. Before I test, I go to the configuration and verify that this checkbox rollback inbound test 
is unchecked because if it's checked, so when we do a test, it goes to the test but doesn't put any data in. Okay, so our, currently our tables are empty. I'm going to open messages. It's empty and I'm going to open mail patients and it's empty as well and now I'm going to go to the mapper and do a mapping test inbound test I'm going to select the HPA01 message that we've downloaded with the project and open it and the test is completed successfully all the data is inside and if we go to the database and run it you see that we got the first name, John, Doe, this is a patient and messages. Let's refresh it. Here's the message version ID that we have mapped and all the data is inside. And this mapping is actually ready for deployment and we can focus on our application, focusing on the way we want to get the data and don't worry about the HL7.